Welcome to Sketchy. We take all the super complex stuff you need to learn and turn them into memorable visual stories packed full of everything you need to know on test day. Click the link in the corner or description to try for free for seven days. Now let's get to it. Beyond the new. This chapter is all about pulmonary dead space disease processes. What is dead space, you ask? Glad you asked. Pulmonary dead space refers to the parts of the lungs that are ventilated, but not perfused. Pulmonary dead space is made up of two sections, anatomic dead space, which refers to the large airways that don't participate in gas exchange, like the mouth, trachea, and bronchioles, and alveolar dead space, which refers to alveoli that don't have any blood flowing through their pulmonary capillaries. Alveolar dead space is what's affected by pulmonary dead space disease processes. Speaking of bienvenu, welcome to 18th century France. Our setting for this sketch will be the French Revolution. You know, where the bourgeoisie traveled to the cities and obstructed the movement of the aristocracy? Kind of like the most well-known pulmonary dead space disease process, and the focus of this sketch, pulmonary embolism. A pulmonary embolism occurs when material from one part of the body travels to the pulmonary arterial circulation and gets stuck there. At Sketchy, PE is represented by our recurring symbol, the bird's nest stuck in that lung-shaped tree. Notice how part of the tree distal to the nest is dead? The most common material that causes PE is a blood clot, aka thromboembolism. But other types of emboli exist, such as fat and air emboli. Whoa, either those are the most translucent pants I've ever seen, or you've got a condition. And are not wearing pants. Either way, let those, uh, pants remind you that most PEs arise from deep vein thromboses in the proximal lower extremity veins, the iliac, femoral, and popliteal veins, to be precise. Compared to distal veins, such as those in the calf, proximal DVTs are much more likely to embolize and cause PEs. Hence the buttons popping off this revolutionary's coat near the proximal part of his pants. PEs are unique in that they're both common and carry high morbidity and mortality if not recognized and treated quickly. Therefore, the evaluation of patients with suspected PEs needs to be super efficient, but fear not, that's where Sketchy comes in. PE has a wide variety of presenting features, ranging from no symptoms all the way to sudden death. Uh, I guess that's just about the widest variety of presentations that can exist. Anywho, the most common presenting symptoms in PE are acute dyspnea, represented by the puff of air being blown by this royalist, pleuritic chest pain, represented by the shark tooth necklace he's wearing across his chest, and cough, represented by this other royalist hacking up a lung. Not a good time to be an aristocrat, I guess. Beyond those three, another symptom you've probably heard of is hemoptysis, represented by this bloody rag. While it's relatively rare, the presence of hemoptysis raises the likelihood of pulmonary infarction, which occurs when a smaller peripheral embolus occludes a peripheral pulmonary artery. Hemoptysis and chest pain occur in patients with pulmonary infarction due to the intense inflammatory response elicited by the infarcted lung tissue. The risk factors for PE are identical to those for deep vein thrombosis, so make sure to ask about a personal or family history of blood clots, cancer, recent surgery, travel history, clotting disorders, or hormone therapies. You know, all the stuff we covered in our sketch on DVTs. Haven't seen it yet? Head on over to the cardiology unit to check it out. The pathophysiology behind these risk factors involves Virchow's triad, stasis of blood flow, endothelial injury, and hypercoagulability. So we've brought back our broken down three-wheeled V-chair as a reminder, currently being used as kindling for this fiery roadblock. Probably not its intended use. With the history out of the way, let's move on to the physical examination for PE. Some of the earliest clues you'll find in a patient with PE can be seen on vitals. The most common vital sign abnormalities in patients with PE or tachypnea, represented by the clock medallion worn on this royalist chest, tachycardia, represented by the heart-shaped pocket watch he's holding up, and decreased oxygen saturation, represented by this glowing red ring that looks suspiciously like a pulse ox. You know what they say about mood rings. Better red than dead. Wait. Meh. Yeah, that sounds good.